Yeah, you heard me right. Next.js is fucking annoying, especially after the newest updates. I'm going to show you exactly why I think it's so goddamn annoying, and then I'm going to show you why I think Svelte is so goddamn Svelte. You know, the word Svelte means dope. I'm paraphrasing. Anyways, if you're watched this far into the video, I recommend that you speed it up to 1.5 or 2 times speed because I tend to talk very slowly. Alright, let's jump in. Alright, so what we have here is a React or Next.js component. And I actually paid for a Tailwind UI, which it's good. You know, it's good. Um, and what we do is we, we choose React and we hit copy here. And all we have to do is paste it in. Seems simple, right? And I already installed Headless UI React. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open up my terminal here. I'm just going to npm install hero icon slash react. And what we see here is you could not resolve dependencies for some other fucking reason. And basically we have to run with force or legacy peer depths to potentially break things. And this is just so annoying to me. I don't have, I have zero clue what this is. I think most people who see this are like, what the fuck? And this is a side effect of the the problem that Next.js has, okay? And, and the problem is, a lot of people have said this before, but they don't focus on stability. They seem to focus on just moving fast and creating a lot of buzz. And so what you end up with is we're on React 15 now. Out of nowhere, when you create a new project, it'll be React, uh, or sorry, it'll be Next.js 15 and React 19 with the compiler. And it's just... So much stuff is broken and different. I mean, theoretically, not a lot of stuff is different, you know, memoize and whatever. But when you actually start using it, you get problems like this. And it's just so annoying. And the other thing with, with Next.js is you're really only hosting on Vercel. Maybe you could move it over to, you know, uh, AWS or whatever, some other platform. But then why even use Next.js? Then you're, you're losing all the benefits of using Next.js in the first place. And so... It's just kind of a stability thing. Like, if you use Svelte or Solid or Vue, you can go anywhere. But with Next.js, you're locked into Vercel. And, and don't get me wrong, Next.js is great, especially if you're a big company. Netflix, Nike, OpenAI for a time. You know, there's plenty of examples of big companies that use Next.js. But personally, I think it's overkill, and I think it's fucking annoying to use. If I, uh, if I didn't make myself clear enough. Let's, let's look at something. So... Most of my projects, I end up doing at least some sort of ISR or SSG. Um, SSR or SSG. SSG is static site generation, so when the site builds, it generates all the pages at once. Whereas SSR is, uh, I think it stands for static site regeneration, or that's ISR. But basically what I'm trying to say is, basically I'm saying um, we... It's good to implement that so that your pages can load faster. And if we just go to the, let's just go to the Next.js documentation for ISR, okay? And this shit, I don't think I've ever gotten this shit right. There's like, get static paths. So, I mean, theoretically, it's not too complicated, right? I might look like an idiot here saying, you, there's these two functions and I don't understand. But yeah, there's these two functions. It looks pretty simple. But it's fucking not, dude. And then this shit, like, it has made me default on the pages router. But I'm using the app router, obviously. And then if you go to the app router, then it's different. And, I mean, so much of this shit is just confusing. And that's great if you're a big company because they have really good engineers and they can get support from Vercel or Next or whatever. And they can make, make sure this shit works perfectly. But what I've learned with Svelte, I, dude, I started using Svelte this morning, all right? What I've learned as well is it's just so much easier to make this shit work. Like, everything... Oh, my light died. Damn it! All right, stand by. All right, the iMacintosh is coming off of life support, and we're plugging the life support instead into my little light here. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. We're lagging, we're lagging. All right, we're not lagging anymore. All right, I'll get back to the point. I'll get to the point. Because I got a really mean comment the other day where this guy was like, get to the point. And then he went and watched another one of my videos. 
And he left another one in all caps. He said, get to the point. Why don't you fucking get off my channel if you're pissed? Um, anyways, we felt what we're doing is this is my page.setup file, and it's under this folder. So it's a domain, it's a multi-tenant app. And I'll probably have to mention that because there's not a lot of documentation about multi-tenant apps. But basically what we're doing is we're saying pre-render equals true. I don't actually know if this does anything. But what I do know is that... I'm looking at the wrong. Okay, here we go. So there's a function in page.server, and all this does is we return the list of paths. So obviously we could do, um, like, so that that's the parameter. So obviously you could fetch these somewhere, but I'm just doing it uh, just hard coded because why the fuck not? Because I'm going to be statically generating these pages. And all you do is you literally export this array of different params and it'll build everything for you. Like, how much more simple could it get? Obviously, this is not like, you know, if you just put this in a fucking random railway deployment, like, it probably wouldn't work, but, because this is a Vercel, this has to do with Vercel's, like, adapter, but it's nice to know that you can do it, and it's super simple, and you could still go somewhere else, and maybe this wouldn't work, but you could still take it somewhere else, and it's just so much easier and simpler to get stuff working. I also like the way that was spelt, like so this is a this is a function where we're taking an array like like this of notion blocks these are like text in a notion page and it's trying to render it and so with react you get like you have to like create a function that goes through and like returns all these divs but with this you use the built-in operator like for each and then you just do basically a switch statement like else if else if and yeah it's just really nice to have everything in html like it feels so much more kind of natural to code this way and you also end up like one benefit of this is you just get less indentation like literally you have your script tag at the top where you can pull in data or whatever and then you just have your whole file is just like random it's just it's just right against the left side which is how it should be instead of having ASIC function and then you have a return statement and then you have an if above the return yeah I mean react is just annoying and I hate the way they just keep breaking things. Like, I feel like runes are a really good addition, and I feel like Svelte makes very intentional changes, whereas Vercel is just moving at the speed of light. And sure, that might be good for some people, but if you're just trying to build shit and you don't need, like, every goddamn feature to be light years ahead of whatever, Svelte is good. It's, it's like, reliable, and it also feels nice to use. So, anyways, that's my sales pitch on why you need to use um, Svelte. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.